I will just uh, create a new project over here. Hold on. Sorry. Yes, tell me. Uh, so I, I I have a doubt. So do we also get any uh, exercises or a set sample uh, for homework kind of thing for every class? Yes, I will give you. Not in the beginning. After seventh class or so, I'll start giving. You. Okay, Holly. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the yesterday's class overview, like what we did was, we see the we saw the concept of interfaces, right? And I told you about interfaces, and I told you how interfaces are used in Selenium, right? We saw this, and we saw that how web driver is an interface, and because of that, you can dynamically initiate web driver to Firefox driver or Chrome driver or I driver. Right, so that's what we did yesterday. Fine, and I also told you that if because of interfaces, all the functions are common in all the drivers. Right, the recorded videos of the classes, right, they are always present on this particular link. Right, I will update the recorded videos of the classes on this particular link. You can have a look at it. Right. I told you in yesterday's class as well. This is the URL. Fine, and I'll create a new Java project. And day four. All right, and uh, I'll add the Selenium jar files into this. Hold on. All right. So uh, now, what we'll do is we'll we'll see how we can identify elements with Selenium. Okay, and how we can work with uh, uh, web pages. Right. For example, I'll create a new class. Right, and I'll just uh, call it identify underscore elements okay now all of us uh, know all of us know that obviously selenium is for web based testing if i write over here web driver interface reference driver equals to new firefox driver then this is going to launch firefox okay right and on the next line and driver dot get to the URL HTTP, say in dot redif.com. Right now, after going to this site, suppose you have to click on a link or interact with the web page, you want to extract the text or anything. Right, so how do you do that? Okay, how do you do that? Hold on, this is. Uh, I'll just open a new browser. Hold on. Firefox is already running. Where is it running? Hold on. Let me launch Firefox. Right. So if I go to the website, in dot dot com, right. Over here, if I have to click on a link or type in into this text field, or I have to do anything, right? Then <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> How do I do that? Look, to do that, the first thing which you need to understand is that you need to understand the concept of HTML language. If you go inside the page source. Right. How do you go inside the page source? Right click on the web page and you will see page source. Selenium works on this page source. This is the HTML code of this web page. Okay. Now the HTML code has 
important like has a kind of pattern you can say there are tags present in html code all these um, red mer merunish names these are known as tags okay they start with a conical bracket right if you look at this also over here this span is a tag it opens up over here this is a conical bracket it closes over here right similarly this div is a tag it opens over here and probably it's closing somewhere at the bottom right now every tag can have attributes for example this is the div tag it's got the attributes like id and class there can be attributes or there can not be attributes it always depends right but with the combination of the tag name and the attributes we find the element on the page every element has a particular tag right so for example over here this is the span tag with the attribute class equals to clear right sometimes you will get tags with no attributes at all yes there are tags right i'll talk about that right so over here there are this is what is present in the page so tags and attributes right now uh, before i move forward okay i am talking about firefox right now in some time i'll i also talk about chrome how to investigate the page source in chrome just be with me just hold on right now in firefox right the better way to investigate the page okay is using is by using firebug firebug is a tool with which you can investigate look i am telling you to investigate the page because before i identify and work with the elements right before i actually go to redif.com and i have to type something to click on the link i need to extract that link i need to understand that i, I need to understand that link so there are various ways for that i'll talk about that just hold on right so firstly you go to google and just type over here firebug download firebug is a add on okay it's a add on for firefox open this link in firefox only i think most of you might be knowing about it right so i have an older version of firefox which is 22 not available so i guess i need to go down and i need to search over here just hold on i'll go into the older versions it will take me some time yeah so this link is enabled i think add to firefox is enabled for that you click on this add to firefox it will download for some time and it's downloading you need to install it right firebug has been successfully installed a new tab will open up right in this new tab you will see that there is a firebug icon on top right side okay this one this icon of firebug on the top right side is there if you click on this you will get these options in your browser okay a window like this will open up okay you have to just increase the text size right okay now over here inside it you will have inside this window you will find the html code okay for example in firebug you will see that there is an arrow icon over here right you click on that arrow icon and move your mouse on the page on various components and you will see the html code of that component for example 
I release, I move my mouse over this text. Firebug release notes. Right. This is Firebug release notes text. This text is actually present inside H2 tag. The H2 tag is opening over here and it is closing over here. The, uh, the class of H2 tag is heading. Fine. So similarly, for any web-based component, you can find the HTML code with the help of uh, Firebug. For example, I go to in.redif.com. Right. Over here, I actually go and spy on this link on the top, for example, shopping. Fine. Shopping link is a tag, is inside a tag known as U, and the U tag is closing over here. If I spy this text field over here, search text field, uh, search text field is actually a division with this particular ID and a lot of other things, a lot of other attributes are also there. Right. So, you know, with the help of spy, you can easily identify the tag name and the attributes corresponding to the web component. Okay. Yeah, RD, I, I'll come over to that question that what about other browsers? This is about Firefox. Okay. Now, what about other browsers? Right. Uh, for example, uh, we want to work on Chrome. All right. So on Chrome, I'll I launch Chrome and say I visit this website timesofindia.com. Right now, if I right click over here, fine. And if I go to the page source, okay, I can again. Find the elements in the page source as a page source is present in all the browsers. But please note, please note, in different browsers, the page source is same. Until or unless the developer has made the website, like the website opens up differently in different browsers, which is very rare, right? But for the websites, the page source always remains the same. Please note this point, okay? The, the page will never change in websites. The page source will never change. It will not happen that if a link is there, uh, the source code of that link is different in Mozilla, it's different in Chrome, it will not be there. It, it will not be like that. If you investigate the element in Mozilla, and suppose this is, the, this is what I'm getting, the same attributes and same tag name I will get in Chrome and IE as well. Okay, right, so this is Chrome, fine. If I, if I want to investigate uh, the elements in Chrome, right, there is an inbuilt option known as Chrome Inspector. Okay, there is an inbuilt option known as Chrome Inspector. It is already there inside Chrome. You just need to, for example, I want to investigate this drop list. Okay. So I can right click on this drop list and you will see the option inspect element. This is known as Chrome inspector. It is already there. You right click, you select inspect element and that element would be highlighted. This is the select box. Okay. With all the select options and all available. Right. So in Chrome, you don't have anything known as fire bug, but you can right click and select inspect element. Right. Now, Please note, the same element in different browsers would be same. Okay, it will not be different. Okay, the page source never varies like that. All right, please note this point. This window can also open with, hold on. Yeah, with the shortcut of F12. If you hit F12, the Chrome instance opens up and it closes. This window can also be opened up like this. Similarly for I also if there is I inspector which can again be opened and closed with F12. Alright, fine. But as I told you, you inspect the element on one browser 
and you can use that element on the other browsers as well right because the page source remains the same fine now in selenium okay in selenium what happens is that um in selenium you have got a concept of web element everything on the page is known as a web element <clears throat> right everything on the page is known as a web element don't confuse this with web element of qtp or uft right that is very different okay this web element is very different fine everything in selenium is known as a comes under web element this link is a web element this text field is a web element this text this written text over here is also known as a web element right if you go to the website seleniumhq.org and go to the documentation right you will see the web element interface will be present over here right interface web element right it represents an html element okay and inside this you will find functions which you can perform on a particular element for example a generic function like click which will click on an element whether that element is a button a text field a radio button a checkbox anything sorry right or a function like find element which will actually find an element or hold on let me to talk about easy things like get text this function will get you the text out of an element okay right and every element on the web page as i told you okay every element has a particular tag name and attributes for example this is a select field if you look at select field then select field has a tag name known as select and it's got an attribute known as id right okay so uh, hold on i'll just close this chrome right and i'll open up mozilla right now over here as well just one minute right suppose let's take up a very simple example right let's go to gmail right and over here you have the username and password field if you observe this username field it's it's an input tag with id email right there is an attribute known as id look if an attribute like id or name appears right then it becomes very easy to detect the element if in case for an element id or name appears in the attribute it becomes very easy because these are unique attributes generally id is an attribute which will not be same for two different elements on the page it should not be right the developers they give unique id to every component on the not to every component but to the majority of the components on the page don't think that every component on the web page will have id but if the id is present it becomes really easy to detect it right for example if i look at the sign in to continue on gmail text it's an h2 tag but it's not got any id so it will not be so easy to extract this component or to read the text with the help of selenium right but if you want to uh, write something in say inside this text field of email or if you want to interact with this text field then it will be easy because this text field has got an id right fine now if i go back to selenium documentation right and if i look at the web driver interface okay then in web driver interface you have a function known as find element 
okay i told you yesterday that web driver interface is something which is implemented by all the classes like firefox driver or and all that stuff okay all the classes they implement the web driver interface right because of that this find element function would also be there inside the web driver interface okay and it will also be there inside all the implementing classes right so over here in eclipse i can write say i want to navigate to gmail.com and then driver dot find element after going to gmail find an element on the page find an element means find a web element okay i told you right everything is denoted by web element okay and find element function finds the first web element using the given method okay what do you mean by first web element i'll just talk about it in some time just hold on right find element function returns you reference of a web element okay and it finds the element by some criteria right so there are two things it finds the element by some criteria and it returns you web element the criteria is specified by the by class by class is inbuilt in selenium right it defines the mechanisms used to locate elements in a document document means the web page okay there are various mechanisms like by class name css selector id link text name and all tag name xpath so there are a lot of things with which you can identify the elements in selenium right we'll start with id because working with id is the most simplest thing right so in this by class all the functions are static you don't need to create the object of the by class if i have to in find the element by id so all you need to do is that you need to write over here driver dot find element find element with which criteria criteria specified by by class by dot you'll get all the static functions in this class one of the static functions in this id by the id of the element okay if you look at the gmail page the id of the input input box over here is email right you specify the id email so what this will do this command will find the email text field on the web page so everything is in built you really don't have to reinvent the wheel over here they have made the function driver dot find element by various criteria of which we have studied id right so the find element function it works and it returns you reference of web element fine so you write over here web element uh say email equals to this you will have to import web element right now if you look at the documentation right this is the web element interface you click on this you will have the interface web element right and as i told you inside this web element interface you you have functions which are generic functions these generic functions they are generic for elements on the page right Uh, like i told you that this is the click function you click on the element and uh, this is a function called send keys use this method to simulate typing into the element if you have to type into the element you'll have to use send keys okay so you write over here oh, sorry just a minute yeah so you write over here email dot send keys and you type any email id so this send keys function will actually type inside the text we'll use this method to simulate typing which may set its value see yesterday i had included the java docs into eclipse right so the same java docs are working right now as well right 
so this is how you interact with the web components web element email equals to driver dot find elements by the id email and it will send something in the email field it will, it will type in something right so web element over here is very important whenever you write driver dot find element it will always return you a web element okay if you run this code it will hold on If I'm running this code, it will open up Firefox. See, it's gone to gmail.com and it's typed in X into the text field, the email text field. Right. Okay. Now this was very simple because this element had an ID. Okay. If you look at the find element function, it says that. Find the first web element using the give, given method. What do you mean by first web element? Okay, look, there is a particular way in which Selenium scans the page. Selenium starts scanning the page at the top left and goes to the bottom right. It scans the page like this. Right. Now I have given some criteria over here. That is driver dot find the element based on the ID of the element. Okay, it should not be the case, but suppose there is a case that two elements on the page have the same ID. One element is over here, and one element on the page is over here. They both have the same ID. Okay, so when Selenium scans the page, when you write driver dot find element function, it will actually go and extract the first element which it finds. Okay. What if you want the second one? We'll talk about that later on. How do you want? How like how you can get the second one? But whenever you write driver dot find element by any condition, we'll see all these conditions in the coming classes, all right? Okay. But when you write driver dot find element by any condition, right? It will go and find the first element on the page with that particular condition. Okay. Similarly, I can work with the password text field as well. You can look at the password text field. The ID of the password text field is PASSWD. So you can write over here web element password equals to driver dot find element by the ID password and password dot send keys. Hello. Right now, if you look at the sign in button, the sign in button has got this ID sign in. So you write over here web element say button equals to driver dot find element by the ID. Everything has an ID, so we are good. Right, so you can write button dot click over here. Okay. So on web element, you have the function click as well. You can click on the web element using click, right? So when you run this, it will enter the username and password and try to log you inside the website. Later on, during the course, we will see how to read the user and I, user ID and password from the Excel file as well. Okay, we'll see that. Account has been disabled. <laughs> okay. Anyways, actually, Google detects automation tools. That's the thing. When you work on Google, they know that you are using automation tools, right? So there's a question being asked. That so you are saying that with the same ID, it will catch the first element. Otherwise, we'll have to. Uh, yes, by default, it finds the first element. Yes, Adi. Right. Fine, but if the developer has made a site in such a way that there are multiple elements with the same ID, then you should actually go and correct him. Right? Besides ID, there is another unique thing known as name. Name is also supposed to be unique for a web component. Okay. If you look at the email text field, 
it's got the id email and luckily it's got the same name as well name is also email so in this case also it will work so you can id and name are the two easiest things which you can use to detect the elements right so when you run this it will again work <clears throat> okay right now every element on the web page i'll not click on it right every element on the web page has a particular id right no it is not the case what if you have an element on the page which is not got an id how do you extract it how do you work with it okay for that we can use a concept known as xpath right i am going to uh, talk about xpaths now fine so every component on a web page will never have an id right let's take example of gmail only for example this text over here which i talked about some time back right if we talk about this text then this text has not got any id it's it between h2 tags and h2 tag has a attribute known as class it's not an id fine so how do you want to how will you read this text if you want to extract this text from the web page how will you do that obviously as i told you for that you'll have to use something known as xpath now what is an xpath okay it is very easy a lot of people they get confused okay it's not like that xpath is like the address of the element on the web page you all stay in a certain house right that house has an address that is house number this xyz road file abc city and country right so similarly every html component every tag has an address that that address is denoted by an xpath for example this is the h2 tag in which we are interested fine so we'll make xpath over here okay now for xpaths please note that there are two types of xpaths one type is known as complete or absolute xpath fine other type of xpath is known as partial xpath so i'll talk about all of these right now if you look into this page source hold on just one minute guys yeah if i look into this page source fine so in this page source this is h2 tag into in which we are interested fine this h2 tag is actually present inside this div tag right this div tag is present inside this div and i'll traverse up on the page right this div is present in this div and this div is present inside this body tag and this body tag is present inside the html tag right kishor just hold on i'll i'll answer your question just hold on right now you can traverse this way on the web page right and you can find the x path okay what i mean to say i'll answer your questions just give me one minute what i mean to say is that the first html tag is html which is this one inside this html tag there are two tags head and body i want to go inside the body tag because h2 tag is present inside the body tag so i'll go inside the body tag inside the body tag there are a lot of tags i want i want to go inside the div tag because inside this div tag ultimately h2 is there so you go inside the div tag inside this div tag 
there are three div tags parallel to each other okay there are three div tags parallel to each other i want to go inside the second one because the second one holds the h2 tag right i'm interested in this one right so i'll write over here inside the div tag go inside div 2 that means second div if i don't write anything over here by default it is 1 it will go inside the first division by default okay i want to go inside the second one so we'll have to specify div 2 okay right and inside the second division there are multiple divisions again i want to go inside this one the first one by default okay because the first one has the h2 tag so you can directly write div slash h2 div if you don't give any number it represents the first div tag only but had i been required to go inside the second or third division tag then i would had been writing over here two or three if i write one also then also it will go inside the first division tag so you are reaching your h2 tag from the base of the document that is the html tag right so this is your xpath okay you can give this xpath into your code and you can extract this element from the web page as well right not a very easy way to form it obviously because i have to start from the base of the document till that element but yes you can identify the element with this xpath right there are few questions being asked just hold on and answer those questions first right is there a way to determine the components on the web page which don't have an id you can write the code for that it will be little complex on kishore there is a way out right but you don't do that okay you only require to use the components which are required in automation fine avinash avinash is asking question we are testing here a functionality of web page yeah so uh, look avinash is asking a question that there is a link on the page we need to test whether it is working properly or not when you click on the link whether the next page is opening or not yes that can be done with selenium i'll tell you okay but what about other functionalities like he is asking a question that whether the link is positioned at the right position on the web page or not okay look you can do that with selenium i'll tell you how you can do that just hold on okay when you extract a web element fine right you can get the location get location is the command dot x will give you the x coordinate of the element and email dot get location dot y will give you the y coordinates of that element so if you want to check whether the location of the element is okay on the page or not you can do that with this and there are some other criteria as well with for, for which i'll be talking about later on fine but guys there is one thing okay right there is one thing that these are automation testing tools these are used supposed to be used okay when automate how did automation testing came up in the market okay nobody started the automation testing directly if it came up with a need that when the projects they became stable okay they went into regression phase and they were stable projects a project which is running for nearly 3 3 years and it is very stable a small change is done inside that project okay then the testers were required to test the complete end to end scenarios of the complete application in spite of the fact that the change which has been deployed is not a major one which will affect the complete functionality okay right now for that particular conditions right automation testing tools they started coming up that people said that fine we will start using automation during the regression phase why because at that time project is stable 
and we don't want our resources to waste time on testing a project which is stable fine now people gradually you know everybody started using it and these days what i feel feel is that people have actually forgotten why we started up with automation testing and they tend to use automation testing for projects which are not stable people are also using it in agile right although i have also done projects in agile on projects which are not stable or projects which are uh, under development the client says that fine go and develop the automation script you go and develop the script but the problem arises when the project changes there there will be lot of defects in the project there will be lot of bugs in a new project okay especially in the agile methodologies when there are sprints and all involved okay there are lot of changes which come up fine because of that you know automation becomes very tough in those projects okay and i personally i don't suggest people to use automation in such projects still they use it these days a trend has started and people are falling into trouble as well because of that right and that is why the question which you asked over here that how do i check whether the position of the link is okay or not fine automation tools were not meant for checking the position of the elements automation tools were used in a situation where the project is stable when you know that fine all my elements are positioned perfectly on the web page i just need to check the functionality and that's what they were meant for functional testing only if you talk about any tool qtp selenium uh this tool from ibm as well i'm forgetting the name i'm sorry right so uh, all of them were made for these things but these days people have diverted away from that and they start using it for things which for which automation was not being made right so obviously problems will come up okay i hope you are getting my point fine so okay there's another question if the ui design changes the xpath to yes obviously okay we studied this xpath over here complete xpath okay or absolute xpath the pro we don't use this kind of xpath the problem with this xpath is that right if something changes on the web page if a new tag is introduced in between then not even this xpath all the xpaths on the page might change right so that will create a problem although this xpat is very accurate fine but if something changes in between it will go for a toss okay right and there's another question being asked so for regression the code have to be you know for regression no no you know uh, uh, actually regression uh, testing for stable projects i was talking about obviously i i told you that if there is a stable project okay in the regression phase right obviously there won't be much many bugs in it so that's why we use automation right id will not yes obviously developers they don't go and change the id of the element like this okay you can expect that fine that the id of the element or the name of the element will not change over a period of time because there is no sense in changing it but yes if some new component gets added on the web page then you know the xpath can change and that is why we use the partial xpath okay just hold on i'll tell you you go to google i'll i'll make you install a tool with which you can calculate the xpath right yeah you have to use any one property varun to identify the element either you use xpath or you use id these are known as locator mechanisms okay when you write over here by dot all of these are locator mechanisms technically these are known as locator mechanisms or locator strategies right you can use any one of them okay now hold on you type on google you type fire bug fire path fire path is a add on which helps you to calculate the xpath in firefox okay it is a very good add on 
fine and it installs on top of firebug please note that you have got your firebug installed it will install as a add on on top of firebug okay so you open this in mozilla only and make sure that firebug is installed you download and add firepath into firebug you install it you restart your browser and once you restart it hold on right now when you open up firebug you will have an option hold on just a minute yeah you will find this option over here firepath okay it will be present in firebug and over here select the option generate absolute x path fine and you when you move your mouse over to any component you will get the complete x path of that particular component okay you don't have to calculate it yourself but this tool will give you right so that's how you can work with it now if i take the x path which i made fine if i look at gmail and if i look at the x path of sign in to gmail so this is the x path given by firebug or firepath fine it is same as the one which i made i did i didn't write div1 over here by default it is div1 only right or i can write it if you want okay uh, you can skip it as well by default it is one fine so you can use this x path if i go to my code now and i write over here web element text equals to driver dot find element by the x path and i'll give the complete x path okay all right and i write text system dot out dot print ln or i'll call, call it heading web element heading right so i want to get the text out of it this is a web element okay heading dot there is a function get text which will get you the text out of the heading okay and it will print the text right fine so uh, yes there is a complication working with auto generated ids i'll just tell you in just just five minutes right so when you work, when you run this it will go to the website and if you look at the output in eclipse you see that it's printing the x and y coordinate which i was printing for the email text field right and it is also uh, printing signing into gmail text which i extracted using xpath fine so same code will work on chrome as well instead of firefox driver if i write chrome driver the same code will work because the reason being the page source is same the xpath will remain same the uh, names the ids will remain same okay browser is just a wrapper okay the page source is same across all the browsers fine if i take the hold on i'll have to set the system property which we used in day 4 yeah so if i run this now on chrome you see that it is typing the username password on chrome and you look at the output it's printing everything on chrome as well right so you don't have to worry right how, how will i work on chrome or so everything works you just have need to change the driver over here and the same code will start working on the other the other browser as well okay right now there is a question being asked what about auto generated ids yes you have got applications in which the id is sometimes they are auto generated and they are changing continuously whenever you visit the web page facebook is a perfect example for this okay whenever you look at the facebook components right you log in into facebook you look at the components you investigate the elements 
every time you'll see that most of the elements on the page facebook after logging in the ids will change automatically okay how do you work with those applications obviously you cannot use ids you'll have to use xpaths and other stuff so we'll talk about that during the course fine we'll stop here okay i'm going to stop here for today